Welcome to another Diaceutics podcast. I'm your host, Steve Vitale, and I'm happy to be joined by our Senior Director of Market Research, Marianne Filion. Recently, Marianne spearheaded an effort to gather insights directly from oncology patients to get an understanding of what they know about biomarkers and diagnostic testing, where they look for information, and what gaps they feel need to be addressed to better arm them with the right details about their conditions, diagnostics, and treatment options. These results were presented recently at the Intellis conference, and we wanted to take a few moments to highlight some of the key findings for everyone out there listening today. Hi, Marianne. Thanks so much for joining me to communicate these important patient perspectives. Thank you, Steve. I'm very delighted to be here. Excellent. Um, so let's just jump right in. You know, where did the patients indicate um, that they go to as their, their main sources of information? And, and were there any surprises in those findings or in their answers? Well, Steve, um, very overwhelmingly, patients indicate their oncologist or treating physician as their main source of information. This isn't surprising, um, and it is very consistent with what we have heard in the past in other patient market research studies, whether it is oncology focus or in another therapeutic area. Physicians and, you know, obviously the overall care team um, has been and remains even in this information overflow era, the main source of information for, for patients. Obviously, uh, online resources come in second as they are plentiful and easily accessible to patients. But we know from experience um, from other research uh, with patients that the use of these online resources really tend to diminish quickly after the initial diagnosis. Interesting. Okay, anything else? Anything else? I'll say to me, what was surprising was the low level of patient-specific information sources or, or patient-supported information sources like blogs, forums, support groups. I would have thought these would have been a little bit higher in terms of their source of information. I assume that patients would reflex towards these sources of information to a much greater extent at diagnosis and our results really do not, do not reflect this um, here. Gotcha. So not surprisingly, really, their, their physician, on oncologist, and the web remain sort of the, the, the top sources. Interesting. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what sorts of terminology related to the patient condition was most familiar to them and least familiar to these patients? And was there anything that was surprising in their answers to you? Well, obviously, biopsy is known to all patients, right? 100% of our patients knew that terminology, likely because it is a very important event in their diagnostic journey. Um, and it, I think we can all relate to that and understand how such an event might be quite memorable and hence, you know, easy to terminology for patients to know and remember. But what I was most surprised about was the low awareness of the terminology biomarker at only 44% of our oncology patients. Um, yes, it is a more technical term and one obviously likely to be unknown of the general public in general. But if you compare that to the other similarly complex terminology um, that we had in our survey, immunotherapy, targeted therapy, um, three out of four patients were familiar with these. So it was very surprising to me that biomarker awareness was less than 50%. Um, and I think that's very, that's extremely relevant um, to us and, and more even um, crucial to our work at Diasudex because we aim to bring the patients on board with us and improve their awareness and knowledge on this topic. It's very important. Um, because we know that wider testing can have a real impact on their outcomes and their lives. And, and knowledge is power, knowledge is empowerment. And if we wanna be able to really reach to patients and, and really truly connect with them, it is vital, I think, that we use a terminology that is relatable to them and understandable to them. So we, we need to understand that and really uh, dig deeper in terms of how they think about biomarkers. Maybe they use genetic testing, maybe they use something else. I've heard some patients even say, well, my type of cancer when they were talking about biomarker. So I think it's something that we need to be cognizant about um, to really get them on board with us and have a real impact. 
Yeah, really interesting. And and just to, to follow on, uh, you know, with the with the terminology biomarker or, or diagnostic testing, did they actually recall being tested for specific biomarkers? And and if that is the case, did they mention you know how often or or when those tests took place uh, throughout the course of their kind of diagnostic journey? Absolutely. We did have uh, half of our patients who recall being tested for biomarkers at some point in their journey. And of these, two out of three patients recall testing positive for at least one biomarker. And many said that these specific biomarker results had an impact on their treatment, which I think is very important and, and something we need to keep in mind. This really highlights a fact that is well known to, to diaceutics and to the pharma companies is that uh, when a a biomarker testing leads to more treatment options and better treatment options. Um, But if we look at the graph on the right-hand side here, it really shows that only one in four recall being tested at diagnosis. We know that timely biomarker testing is key to having all the right options available at the right time. So it leaves the question um, to us and to everyone Are patients tested soon enough, or is it sometimes a little bit too late in their diagnostic and their overall oncology journey? Yeah, that's really interesting in terms of the timing. You know, the better testing, you know, implies or, you know, assumes that there's early enough testing to to make the right treatment decisions. That's that's really interesting. Um, And to keep pulling at that thread, even with, you know, the understanding or the mention of biomarkers and, and, and the testing, um, how about like their understanding or level of understanding? Um, you know, do they, how does that compare sort of the biomarkers to the things that they understand as it relates to either treatment or side effects? Like how, how does that uh, sort of play out in terms of at least what these patients uh, responded to in, in our survey? Well, Steve, I'm really glad you're bringing this up. Um, This question in our survey turned out to be one of the key findings of our research, really. We asked patients, you know, which topics were the easiest to understand, which were the most difficult to understand, and which of these topics they wanted to learn more about. And the diagnosis and the treatment itself uh, were really deemed to be the easiest topic to understand for patients. And that, that's a great finding. We're, we're very happy about that. It's very important to understand your treatment, to really be on board and engage in that treatment. But we also found out that the biomarkers um, was not deemed something easy to understand. In fact, it was deemed by a large majority the most difficult topic to understand for our patients. I think it shows that there is a lot of room for improvement in this field in how we communicate to patients about biomarkers and genetic testing. Um, It also shows that, uh, moreover, biomarkers were selected more often than all the other topics as one that patients would like to know more about and understand better. So not only is it difficult to understand, but on the positive side, Patients do want to learn about biomarkers more. Um, and I think it, it clearly outlined that as an industry, we have a lot of work to do. But on the bright side, we have a very receptive audience that is willing and able and interested in learning more. Um, and that really wants to get engaged in that topic. This is certainly uh, one of the areas where diaceutics will strive to make some important headways, I think, in the next few months. That's great. Really interesting stuff. And finally, just to follow up on that, of the various resources that are available to patients for for information, um, were there any that stood out in terms of what they the, the patients claimed to be the most accessible and reliable? So just being able to get information is one thing, but to really trust that information and trust the reliability of the foundations there, is there something that stood out there? Well, I I can tell you, Steve, from our results, we see that that combination of accessibility and reliability does not exist yet. So out of all the information resources that we tested, which included oncologists or their care team, um, forums, patient forums and blogs, online searches and patient support groups, 
none of these four resources had both um, factors. So none of them were both considered both reliable and accessible. Obviously, physicians scored very highly in terms of reliability. This is the oncologists and, and physicians and the care team is deemed the reliable sources, but is not an accessible one to patients. While online searches and patient forums and blogs and patient support groups are deemed many things accessible, uh, relatable, um, easy to understand, but they are not uh, considered uh, reliable sources of information. So, and, and I think we really, you, you've put the, uh, you've really highlighted the, the importance here to have a source of information that is equally both to patients. Um, and I think that's where we can do some work. Uh, Diaceutics, along obviously with its pharma partners, really need to find a solution to providing patients with a source of information that will be as reliable as their physicians in the patient's mind, but a lot more accessible, a lot more relatable to the patient. We are hoping that some of our ongoing projects will start to provide answers in that area and some very tangible solutions that will have a direct impact on patient's life. Well, that's fantastic. Thanks so much for, for sharing the, the highlights of this very interesting resource, uh, or research rather. So if, if anyone out there is interested in learning more, please feel free to get in contact directly with myself or Marianne. Our contact information is, is right there on the slide for you. And uh, we look forward to sharing more uh, interesting details about uh, improving diagnostic testing and, and driving better patient care in our future podcasts. Thanks so much for joining me today, Marianne. Thank you, Steve. And if I can add very quickly, um, I would like to very humbly reuse some of the words that our patient uh, that was working with us said to me. And she said, there is life after a cancer diagnosis. And I have high hopes that our work will really make that life better and for as many patients as possible. Thanks so much. That's fantastic. Have a great day. Thank you.